Hello, 3D printing friends. You know, a lot of filament vendors are starting to get into the master spool refill game, and I've got some here from one of the newest entrants. Stick around, we'll find out who it is and how well it works. I'm Brian, and you are watching BV3D. Hi, welcome back. So a couple of weeks ago, 3D Solutech decided they were going to test the waters of the master spool refill initiative. So I ordered some, uh, they have two colors, red and green, I ordered some red. And if you were one of the first to order, and you sent them a note on Facebook, they would send you a pre-printed master spool. So the idea behind the master spool initiative is that you have less waste when you're 3D printing, because when you run out of filament on your spool, rather than having to throw your spool away, you can reload filament onto it and continue printing. So let's get into the package and see how easily it goes onto the spool. Here we go, we've got our 3D Solutech Master Spool Filament. Let's open this up and take a look. Okay, here we have a nice big coil of red and we can see the end of it right here. So let's get this loaded onto the spool. We'll start by unscrewing the spool here. And we need to move the zip ties so that they're facing out so we'll be able to easily snip them and get them out of the way. All right. Well, that's working out well so far. That just slots right on. Now all we got to do is cut the zip ties. I'm grabbing a hold of the filament end here so it doesn't start unwinding. All right. And this spool includes little spots to snap the filament in. And there we have it. That was actually pretty quick and easy. I'm surprised at how well that went together. Let's go ahead and get this loaded up on our Mark III. Oh, well, there's a potential issue. The hub of this is a little bit small. I think I have another spool holder. Let me go find it. Okay, I'm back with one of my uh, only modifications that I've ever made on this Mark III. And that is this other spool holder. That's better. And that's exactly why I made that spool holder, because I had another spool that had a smaller hub diameter. All right, well, let's get this loaded up. We'll preheat this for PLA, and then we can run the load cycle and get the filament loaded. And now that the nozzle is up to temp, we should be able to auto-load the filament. And we're loaded. Now one thing that I'm noticing right off the bat is that the filament is wanting to kind of go down in between the coil and the wall of the spool. Now the spool is tightened as far as it'll go, so I'm hoping that that's not going to cause a problem. We'll find out as I print. Really, I don't want this to snag. Well, all right, we've got a print started on the Mark III. I'm going to do a time lapse of it, and then we'll see how it does when we're all finished. I'm hoping that I don't have any snags in the filament. So it looks like the issue with the spool seems to have resolved itself. I guess it loosened up a little bit enough that uh, the filament's no longer trying to get down into the hub. So that's good. And our print is finished as well, so let's pull that off of the bed and see how it turned out. 
All right, here we go. Let's get this off the bed. Man, I love magnetic flexible build surfaces. So I'm still impressed with the way the 3D Solutec filament prints. It always works really well for me, and I've never had a problem with it. Now, I did have one small issue with one corner of the print lifting a little bit, but it's barely noticeable. And I think that's because I've got this printer up in the attic workshop right now, and it's like 40 degrees Fahrenheit. In this instance, it's okay, because this is a test part, and that little bit of lift won't affect what I want it for. And I'm glad the filament issue worked itself out, and the filament's no longer seeking the hub on the spool. I suspect once the coil loosened up, everything kind of settled into place, and now it's all good. So am I sold on the Master Spool Initiative? Well, I think the concept has promise. Interestingly, a few, very few, other filament manufacturers use cardboard spools which are easily recyclable. I guess ultimately it's up to the market to decide whether it's more convenient to load filament coils onto reloadable spools, use spools that have less plastic in them overall, or use recyclable spools, either cardboard or properly marked plastic. Personally, I don't mind using refillable spools as long as the coils behave themselves and don't get tangled. Well, we're at that part of the video where I say things like like, subscribe, and share, because those three things really do help the channel. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up, and if you didn't, give it a thumbs down, but either way, leave your thoughts in the comments. If you'd like to support the channel with a one-time micropayment, you could buy me a coffee, or leave a little something in a PayPal tip jar. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so by clicking the BB3D icon right over here, and ring that bell to be notified when I release new videos. Oh, speaking of videos, here's one YouTube thinks you might enjoy. Well, that's about all the time we've got for this one. So now that I've got a big spool of red filament loaded on the printer, I'm going to go watch some Ivan Miranda videos and come up with something cool to print. You go print something cool too. I'll see you next time.